This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is even another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time is going to be an updated World Chalice deck profile for the post-circuit break format, the spiral format, whatever you really want to call it. Uh, basically, I haven't put any World Chalice lists on my channel in a long time in terms of my own lists. It's been... A month if not over a month at this point and uh and there's been a lot of like just theory changes that have changed in terms of how the deck functions personal card choices that i've been you know slimming down on and then boosting up in terms of different cards being run and all that sort of stuff so i have people that constantly ask me like what they think that what i think that they should be playing as far as world chalice goes and it is a deck that i really enjoy and if i'd been able to make it to ycs dallas I would have probably played this deck in the main event, uh, because it's the one that I was the most comfortable with. I'd been testing Spirals, and I did have, you know, arrangements to play Spirals, but if those had fallen through, I would have definitely defaulted back to this, because it was the deck that I had the most, outlandishly most amounts of experience with, essentially. Uh, and I'd kind of built it to play against Spiral and that format, so it was the, it was the deck that I could have probably, like, felt the most comfortable entering the event with. But anyway, the deck list is 40 cards. Uh, it starts out with three Lee the World Chalice Fairy, as should be pretty standard. Uh, three World Legacy World Chalice. This is obviously like your best World Chalice monster in your deck by far, bar none. And then one World Chalice Guard Dragon and one chosen by the World Chalice. These are the only World Chalice monsters in my main deck. I'm only playing eight World Chalice monsters. Um, I just found that like a slim package worked best for me in terms of like with the other cards I'm playing and all that sort of stuff. And I didn't really see a need to like bump any of them up now. In future, when we get cards like Trigate and stuff like that, then obviously, like, you can change things around. I didn't feel like Baguska was too important to the overall game plan, although it is a very good card that I did test. Ultimately, I just liked the uh, the potential Cyber Dragon Infinity play a lot better, and Baguska directly conflicts with that. I wanted all my boards to end with, like, potential negations for, like, evenly matched or, like, the Clutch Rageki or whatever. Uh, but so, like, I just, I filled my deck with a bunch of other, like, consistency-enabling cards and, like, just, you know, stunny cards and stuff like that. And then just, you know, slimmed down the World Chalice uh, number in my main deck to what I felt was a reasonable amount to still be playing World Chalice with. Uh, but, carrying on, three, the Agent of Creation Venus, and then three Shine Ball. This is the literal best engine for this deck. Like, one monster giving you four materials on board that also just happens to, like, go up into your, uh, your link plays is obviously just really good for obvious reasons. Uh, and people try to contact me and is like, can you build a list that doesn't involve Venus? And my answer to them is no, because there's no reason you would have me play a deck. There's no reason I should build a deck to be objectively worse than its predecessor, because the only thing you could really replace Venus with is with cards like Rescue Rabbit that you have to play more vanillas to support anyway, so the argument of it cuts down on vanillas in your deck is not a valid argument. But then also, Rescue Rabbit is just such a card that gets ashed like nobody's business. Uh, and so this card, this card's strong against every hand trap except for uh, Ghost Ogre in the current format. So like, uh, that works out fine. Gamma and Ghost Ogre are the only ones that really stop Venus, and so it's actually really good. This deck's actually really cool for that because it's it's capable of playing through most of the popular hand traps that deal with spirals because you can play under Droll. Um, you can uh, you can play around Ash Blossom. There are only a couple of key interactions that the deck, interactions that the deck has that can be stopped by hand traps where your turn just outright ends. Uh, but they're very few compared to other decks. So that's another reason why I probably would have played this deck at Dallas um, as a fallback had I not been able to get Spiral and had I gone to Dallas without my trip plans falling through. But anyway, three copies of Blackwing Go Through the Vague Shadow. This card is obviously just an amazing extender. Uh, being able to start your turn with this card is obviously really good for obvious reasons. Uh, I don't understand uh, why people would actively want to play less of this card, because you could always just ditch it out of your hand with Lee if you have duplicates. Like, it makes all your hands that don't involve Venus really good, but then even Gofu plus Venus by itself is an Ingirsu play to draw at least two cards. Uh, so, like, it just it allows you to play through hand traps, play through back row, and stuff like that. So it just seems, seems well worth, in my opinion. And then carrying on, we have three copies of Exodius, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. This card is by far my favorite monster in the main deck outside of Venus. Uh, this card is great. Uh, this card also functions as like an out to masterpiece if that ever comes up because you can just make it big, bait the masterpiece pop with something, and then just make Exodius uh, and try to make it as big as possible through pumping with uh, putting Shine Balls in Grave and stuff. 
uh, but this plus any like combo is always just amazing. Uh, the ability to have longevity in your game as well, like if you end turns with Exodius in your hand and you don't have to worry about your opponent outing parts of your board and you not being able to reestablish because you can just drop Exodius, recycle all the resources and do it essentially again. Uh, it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful card. Um, with Emerald being gone, this is definitely something that I think is necessary in the deck at, at least two. Um, it's a card that at three it can clump, but at the same time is that it's not a hard once per turn, so you can just keep special summoning them. At the worst case scenario, it's just an, a card you can special summon by returning one card back to your deck, and then just having an extra monster on the board, which is also something this deck really kind of needs, is the ability to put monsters on the board. Like, if World Chalice ever got like a Photon Thrasher type card, uh, or like Geary, a Geargy Accelerator type card, I feel like that would fix a lot of the deck's core issues. Like a World Chalice named card like that would really do a lot. Uh, but anyway, uh, Lapis, uh, Lapis, Gym Knight Lazuli is, uh, is the last actual, like, real monster in the deck. Uh, but then we move on to the Hand Traps, of which there are eight of them. There's one Maxi, there's three Ash Blossoms, there's two Ghost Ogres, and then two Droll and Lock Birds in the main deck. Now, I went with eight instead of ten, although you can go to ten. Uh, by playing, like, uh, two copies of, like, Ghost, uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, although I don't really like that card for this deck, uh, because that requires you to have, like, two or three extra deck spaces to dedicate to playing, like, a Double Helix, like, an ABC Dragon Buster, uh, and stuff like that, whereas this deck's extra deck is actually quite tight. Um, but you could easily make it ten by playing the third Droll and the third Ghost Ogre, uh, instead of, like, two cards you'll see later in the list, but I wanted my deck to be literally, like, 30 engine cards, and... 10 non-engine cards, which are the uh, the, hand tra the eight hand traps and then two twin twisters that I played in the main. But if I were to play this deck at Dallas, I would have more than likely swapped those two twin twisters for the third copy of Ogre and the third copy of Droll. Uh, I'm not playing Kaijus in this list. Uh, the Kaiju cards just aren't really like that needed, nor are they really good at this point in juncture. Uh, they don't really help you going second anywhere near as much as these cards do against Spiral. Uh, and then also uh, going first, these are also just really good against, you know, the wide range of the field because you can just put up your board and hide behind these hand traps, especially since with hand traps, every time you activate them, if you're able to make Firewall Dragon, you can put them back into your hand so you can keep your hand trap game really strong against your opponent. But then also, um, you, have, uh, you have things that you have to factor in as well, like going second against Spiral, they could set rotation you. And that turns off the field spells in your deck, so it's just another reason why I just did not want to play Kaijus. Um, I was completely fine with uh, I'm completely fine with Cyber Dragon Infinity uh, being the only like negation card in my deck that I can summon because it's actually just really easy to summon that card with almost any hand that lets you draw three off in Gearsu. You are also able to make Cyber Dragon Infinity, uh, which is actually just something that I found in uh, weeks of testing with this deck. But uh, I could easily see myself bumping up more hand traps just to deal with spirals and stuff like that. Uh, definitely makes the deck a bit easier to go second with uh, in a field full of spirals because you know you you ash their double helix or you ogre their double helix or you droll them or whatever um, and like their their turn structure becomes very like diminished over what it was beforehand and also like I've said previously like this deck doesn't lose to these hand traps nearly as much as the other deck like spirals do uh, does um, the only place that ghost ogre really absolutely hurts you and kills you is on like things like your Aurum or your um, or your Venus, uh, but even then, depending on what your hand was, you can play out of it. Um, this deck isn't nearly as fragile as Spirals in terms of one hand trap stopping like a huge section of combos. Um, if you get drolled on like your Lee, you can still play the game. You just can't draw three cards off Ningirsu, which is irritating. But at the same time, like that was never what you really needed. It was just a benefit to recoup some of the advantage that you put into the uh, into the play. Uh, you can play around Ash Blossom. Uh, and something else that I really like, that I actually just completely forgot about, was that Ash can negate Maxi, and then Droll and Lock can also negate Maxi, because they, they Maxi you, they draw a card, and then you just Droll them. So they've drawn one off Maxi, but then that's it. Sure, you can't uh, search off of Lee, and sure, you can't draw off Ningirsu anymore in the turn, but that's actually just still really cool. Like, you just got rid of the Maxi, and you just get to make your play. Um, so that's something that I really enjoy about specifically having Droll in the list. Um... Like, Droll is actually just really cool, but anyway, that's like 29 monsters, I think. It's either 29 or 30, uh, but this is a 40-card deck, but carrying on. To the spells, there's either 10 or 11 of them. We'll find out in a second. Uh, three Brilliant Fusions starting us off. This card's obviously really good. Uh, gets you to Lee and stuff. Same with the Foolish. 
Uh, this is for putting Lee in Grave, putting Venus in Grave for Aurum plays. Brilliant Fusion does the exact same thing. Uh, but also, uh, Foolish is really cool for this particular deck as well, because if you have Lee, if you have a Venus play, if you have a Lee play, whatever, and you have the uh, and you have the Foolish, you can Foolish a Hand Trap and then add it back to your hand off Firewall uh, mid combo. So you can like Foolish the Max C, add it to your hand, or like after you and Gearsu draw and see what three cards you're drawing or two or two or three cards you draw, you can play Foolish, send whatever Hand Trap you didn't draw, so you have multiples in hand and add it with Firewall. Uh, so like Foolish has a lot of utility there as well. I'm playing two copies of Transmodify. Uh, this card is a very, very high risk, high reward card. Uh, your opponent going first has a 33.7 ish percent chance of having Ash Blossom in their hand. And this card just is literally like the highest risk, high reward card um, that I've ever seen. Like if you open Brilliant Fusion or Lee or Foolish and Transmodify and you're using Transmodify to go into your Venus, um, if they Ash you there, then you do actually just lose depending on what the rest of your hand was. Um, more times than not, it will just be such a huge hit to your uh, to your play. Uh, but I tried playing the deck without these cards, and it just it it was constantly missed. So I decided to put it back in. Uh, the only thing these would be in place of this would be like Machine Dupe, but like those don't really get you out of the early game um, nearly as well as like Transmodify does because Lee like Lee is your worst summon in the early game which is weird considering it's a stratos but if your play line literally if the first thing you're doing every turn is to normal summon lee and add a card that actually just sucks in this deck because this deck has no way to special summon outside of um outside of other cards like venus or exodius or gofu <laughs> so like transmodify really just helps those situations where it just makes your uh, starting plays really uh really more streamlined and simplified and so i have to put my opponent on better have it better have the ash or else uh, I'm going to do Venus and uh, World Legacy World Chalice things. So it's a, it's a card that I feel is justifiable to run. Even though I'm not really the biggest fan of it, I miss it every time it's not there. But anyway, uh, for one of's Soul Charge, uh, World Legacy's Heart, and I'm playing the one e Telly. <laughs> I'm playing e Telly with one Chosen in my deck, uh, which is actually just fine. Um, because there's three Exodius, uh, if you ever get to Chosen, you just summon it out of your hand mid-combo, and you put it in your grave, and then summon Exodius. It goes back into your deck, and then you have the e Um Like, it's actually just perfectly fine. This is just another one of those cards that, like, special summons a card, and those are in real high demand in this deck. Like, God. Um, so it's just one of those cards that, it was just like an, it was an auto-inclusion of just like, even if I'm only playing one Chosen, I do not care if I draw them together, because at the end of the day, I could do Exodius plays, or I will 100% just like e Telly a Chosen out of my hand, if that's what makes the play happen. I'll take that minus to get to the Ningirsu play where I get those cards back. I'll take that. I'm not too worried about that. Soul Charge is obviously fine because it's Soul Charge. Um, if there's any card that I'm considering bumping up into more copies, it's probably, uh, it's probably, uh, like, this card, Twin Twister. Um, th these are the last two cards in my deck, uh, the Twin Twisters. Twin Twister is good, um, going first and second, but I don't think it's necessarily better than the Hand Traps. Uh, so, like, if I were going to swap the- it's, I kind of want the third copy of this in my deck. I definitely don't want these to be evenly matched, uh, because evenly matched is just kind of, like, ugh. Um, this can actually just, you know, do a lot for you, especially considering the fact that you could discard, like, a Shine Ball or Chosen or uh, Guard Dragon or whatever, and those like can be gotten back off of like Brilliant Fusion plays or Guard Dragon does things in Grave, um, stuff like that. Um, so it's it's not, the discard's never a problem with this card. Um, the thing is, is like, whenever I draw it, I usually want it to be more. <laughs> if, that, if that doesn't sound strange, I don't know what does. Um, but at the same time, like I'm fine with it being a two? Kinda weird, I don't know. But uh, these are the cards that I would possibly swap for like other hand traps, like the third droll and third uh, third ghost ogre, if I were ever to cut them from my list. I definitely wouldn't cut them for more vanillas. Uh, that's for damn sure. Um, there's no real reason to be uh, to be playing more vanillas in this deck uh, than absolutely bare minimum, and that is you know your lazuli, your garnet, and then the the one chosen and the three shine balls. Uh, so I'm, I'm liking the way the deck functions. They, you, in theory, get rewarded for playing more World Chalice Vanillas because of the way the Link Monsters work. But at the same time, those things clump your hands in bricks. I mean, it's it's weird. It's weird and wild and whatever. But anyway, 
For the extra deck, these is, this is obviously 15 cards. If it's not 15 cards, I'm doing it wrong. Uh, but three copies of Mduk because this comes up a lot more um, than you'd think it does, especially in uh, in the combos that involve like Gofu and Venus. Um, one Link Spider. I wish I had room for a second one, and the second one will probably be coming in uh, once we get Trigate Wizard to replace the Cyber Dragon Infinity. Uh, but as of right now, there's only space for one because the uh, the third Mduk comes up a lot more than the second Link Spider does. So. Uh, so that's that's why that's uh, that's why that's a case. Uh, but then uh, one proxy dragon, two Ebes, and one Orum are the link twos. For the link threes, there's just the one in gear suit and the one Gaia Saber, the Lightning Shadow. Uh, I don't play Deco Talker. I play this card specifically so that like I can make it pointing down at my firewall or whatever. And then the one link spider goes in the other uh, extra monster zone because like you you need if you're not playing two link spiders, you have to be playing this card in order to extra link your opponent, or else it's literally impossible. Outside of some weird bullshit like Firewall Dragon, Firewall Dragon, Eeb, Ningirsu that you've summoned a second time in the turn but didn't get to draw for, and then <laughs> like Spider. Like, it's it's weird things like that. Uh, but then, uh, two Firewall Dragons. Uh, this card's basically irreplaceable in the deck because this is the entire point of your deck is to get to Ningirsu um, and then make Firewalls and do all that sort of stuff. So, uh, you, you kind of need this card to play and it sucks that it's expensive as it is, but I mean, hey, whatever. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, right? <laughs> I'm really tired. Uh, but anyway, one copy of Cyber Dragon Nova and one copy of Cyber Dragon Infinity. These are for all of the plays with, uh, with World Legacy World Chalice. Um, I was playing Machine Dupe in my original build where I started testing these cards, but then I started phasing Machine Dupe out because I, I, I started realizing that, I may have said this earlier in the video, but almost every single hand that involves, um, that involves an Ingirsu play to draw three cards while using World Legacy World Chalice, almost every single one of those plays can still get you to Cyber Dragon Infinity because of how Firewall Dragon interacts <gasps> with the rest of this deck. Um, so like it just it makes it really really easy for you to do. And so being able to summon this from your extra deck next to all your Link monsters, uh, just to be a choice negation card against like a Raigeki or against an evenly matched or whatever, uh, is actually just huge. Um, so, like, I really like Cyber Dragon Infinity, but I'm going to be a lot happier when I get to replace this with, uh, with Trigate Wizard, uh, because Trigate Wizard essentially does the exact same thing, and it takes arguably the same amount of resources, um, so there's that to, uh, to consider, but last card in the extra deck is the Gym Knight Seraph Knight, so that I can even play Brilliant Fusion, so that I can keep searching Lee, and, uh, and keep searching the Agent of Creation Venus, but, so anyway, that is the deck. That is the deck in its entirety as I'm currently playing it. Like I said, if I had been able to go to Dallas, um, this is actually just more than likely the deck I would have played for the main event. I tested Spirals a lot, but I really just don't like that deck uh, objectively. Like, I don't like how the deck plays. I don't like I don't like how like the mirror match handles. And so I figured that I probably would have just played this deck because it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot less fragile. It takes a lot more combo pieces to get started than a deck like Spiral does. Uh, this takes a lot of like three card combos, uh, but it's not nearly as fragile as something like Spiral is in terms of two hand traps. Like this deck can physically play through al almost all of the popular hand traps. The only ones that it really struggles against are Gamma and uh, Ghost Ogre on your Venus and Ash Blossom on your Transmodifier. Really, the only places where it, the deck absolutely just gets shit on stopped by one hand trap. Uh, but uh, but like other than that, like. Playing through Droll is easy. Playing uh, playing around Ash Blossom with all your prominent effects, like your Ningirsu and your World Legacy World Chalice, those are all easy. Like it's it's very it's very interesting how this deck functions as a Link deck in comparison to Spirals. But anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on the deck and all that sort of stuff in the comments down below. I'm super curious of your opinions and all that sort of whatnot. Like I said, Kaiju's the Kaiju field spell just sucks because of set rotation giving you a card you can't play. And then also, like, it just takes up too much of the deck space. They're bricks and all that sort of stuff. Uh, they don't really help you going second against Spiral that much. Because, I mean, like, you could Kaiju a Sleeper. Neat. They could still have Firewall Dragons and all that sort of stuff. I'd rather just play things like Droll and Ogre to prevent them from making those plays. So, that's all stuff that has to be considered and taken into account for. But anyway, like I've already said, 
Thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts and opinions are in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links as always are in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've been making and want to support my ability to make them, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as, if you're interested in getting into my private Discord server with me and a bunch of other people where we chat on a daily basis, or if you're interested in monthly giveaways for amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh product, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over on the Patreon. And any support you'd like to give me or the channel in advance, you'd have my thanks for because it just helps out a ton, like I've said many times in the past. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know, you have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.